In today's video, we're going to be talking about Layer. This is a building information management system that connects your model, your notes, your spec sheets, your spreadsheets, and your team. Let's go. Now, the problem with data in the AC industry is that it's in different formats in different programs that aren't really designed to work together. Well, Layer is an integration solution for all of this data. Layer helps with storage, access, modification, and analysis of all of your data. Now, because it's all interconnected, there is less time spent on updates. So how does it work? Revit model is the source of quantities and locations, and layer is the source of product details and document information. In layer, we have a hierarchy of projects, categories, elements, and fields. Most importantly, it's all interconnected. Finally, all data can be viewed in multiple views as gallery views, document views, and drawing views. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually get started with layer, how can you connect your existing Revit models with layer, and then how you can take it from there and connect all of your documentation in one place. If you want to check out Layer, I'm going to be leaving a link up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. And full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. So now, without any further ado, let's get into it. And here we are at Google, and I'm just going to open up the Layer app website, and here you can sign in. I already have an account, so when I go to sign in, as you can see, it's going to open up my projects here, and let's start a new project now. So I'm going to go here to create project, and then first I can select uh, what type of project I want to create. Uh, so here I'm going to go with the room survey. Once that opens up here, we can give it a project name. So let's call it a Balkan Arctic project. And for the location, I'm just going to enter the name of my country. And then let's click on create from template. So when we click on create from template, it's going to open up our project. And this is what that looks like. Uh, now here, I don't really have any models connected to this. Uh, so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to connect a new model. So you just click here to start connecting a model. Now here we have a couple of options. We can either upload a model manually to layer or what I prefer is to connect directly from Revit. So I'm just going to click on that and then click continue. Uh, now here uh, we first need to download the layer uh, Revit add-in. So I'm just going to click here on download. Obviously you only need to do this once and then you're always going to have it installed in Revit. So let's go here to download and as soon as the download is done, uh, I'm going to start the installation process. For this, just make sure that Revit is uh, not running at the moment when you're installing it. Now I've started the installation, as you can see, it's very simple, straightforward, just like installing anything else. Just pick where you want it to be installed, you check what needs to be checked, and uh, it's going to be installed in several minutes. Okay, so it's been less than a minute actually, and the installation process is finished. So what I'll do now is I'm going to start up Revit. On the first startup, you're going to probably get this menu. So you just wanna check on always load, and then Revit is going to start up and every new time you start Revit, a layer is going to be installed. So I've opened up this project in Revit and this is what I'm going to be using for this demonstration. And then let's go to the layer tab. It's going to appear right here in the ribbon. First, we do need to sign in. So basically you use the same uh, email and password that you used for layer just to sign in. And once you're signed in, then it's just a matter of publishing the model. So I'm just going to click here and this is going to publish the model to layer. And then you just need to click OK once this menu appears and you'll see the layer window will appear here. And here we also need to sign in. 
Now, once we're signed in, we need to publish that model. So let's select the project. So this will be the Vulcan Architect project. This is the office building and we can just process the models now. And as you can see, it's going to start processing and translating this model into the layer app. Now back here in layer, I can just select the model that I want to use. Uh, so that's this one, continue. And as you can see, it's going uh, from Revit. So let's click here on process as well. Now, once the model is processed, we're going to get a notification. So I can just close out of this. And then here in the models, as you can see, we're going to have a lot of information. So first, let's open up rooms and let's open up the table with all rooms. Now here you're going to notice that we have multiple uh, fields and now for these fields, you can uh, turn them off if you want. So for example, I don't really want the model name because it's all the same model. So what I'm going to do is just click on the model name and then we have the option to hide this field. The same thing is going to be for the uh, element version history. So let's hide that one as well. And here we can expand these if we want, we can make them smaller if we want and so on. The whole idea behind this particular project is that they want to do room surveys uh, on this project. So we have the project linked up. Now I'm going to go to the room survey category and that's going to open up all of the rooms. Now these are the built in rooms that you uh, get by default these are some of the categories that you get. So as you can see, it's a uh, pretty standard, something that you would expect for a room survey. We have the room number, room level, uh, status, uh, we have the uh, survey status. And then also here we have the, all of the additional options. So if I select one of these, uh, rooms. As you can see here, we can add a room number level. We can also add a plan reference so we can uh, locate it on the plan where it is. As I said, the status, some photos. So if we have taken some photos on the site, uh, we can load that there. And uh, also when it comes to actual site surveys, uh, you might be going on a site once as a one-time thing, or it might be a recurring task if you're doing uh, inspections or so on. So in these cases, you can use the mobile app instead of using the desktop version uh, because obviously you're in the field. Makes more sense just to take your phone, take a photo, and then upload it directly on the app. And it's going to be included here. Uh, and of course, uh, additional fields can be added. So we have the uh, floor material, floor condition, and so on and so forth. Uh, as you can see here, we can even add some notes on the walls, uh, ceilings, about the lighting, and uh, some overall uh, notes. Of course, every project is going to be a little bit different. So for that, we do have the ability to either create new fields or we can customize the existing ones. So here, for example, we have this uh, floor condition. And if I just open up these three dots, I can go into edit field. And then here we can edit that field. So in this case, we have the uh, floor condition, it can be poor, fair or good. Uh, in this case, the client asks us to uh, include information if the floor needs to be replaced. So I can just add an additional option for exactly that. And then I can assign a color. Uh, let's make it. Uh, hmm, let's make it purple and then hit finish and save that field. And now we have that option here. Instead of good, we can say that this, uh, for example, floor in the cafeteria needs to be replaced. Now, what makes layer really powerful is the fact that you can actually add new fields and create your own for specific projects. So here I want to create a new field. And as you can see, we have many different categories. So we can have like the time when it was created, who, who created it, um, who updated this last, and then we can add some phone numbers, multiple select, drop menus, text, and so on. But in this case, what I want to add is a related element. So I want to attach an element from the Revit model to this particular room survey. So I'm just going to name this uh, furniture assigned. And then for the related category, I'm going to relate the furniture from the model which we have. Uh, because each room can have multiple pieces of furniture, let's go to select multiple. And then also I want to track item quantities as well. We can pick out the color which we like if we want, and then we can create that field. Now, if I decide to create a new room, so let me add a new room here, I can then come in here and for the room, let's just call this one the reception area. 
for the level this is going to be at ground level and then moving down uh, what you'll notice is here at the bottom we're going to have the option for furniture assigned that's the field that we have just created so if i click on add item here it's going to open up a list of all furniture which we have in our model so i can say okay so for this reception area we have a conference table with some chairs we have this executive chair and then also we've seen a laptop there on our survey so we can just add those items and then we can click save so now this room as we're doing the survey we're linking it up with the Revit model now once we have covered the data entry part now it's time to actually use that data and view it in different uh, view modes so we have this tabular view mode which is works really well especially when we're in the field uh, you can easily enter all of the information on your mobile device however there are other types of views that you can use so one of the uh, options here is as you can see under our room survey we have different types of views so we have gallery view a list view and then also we have a drawing set so if i click on this you can see it's going to open up an actual drawing now this is really good in situations where you're starting off and you don't really have a revit model you've been sent out in the field and you don't have a revit model so what are you going to associate your rooms and all of the data to well with the drawing set you can associate that to a PDF or a plan or something like that that you have of the building so you might only have some plans and then you can use that so here if I zoom in a little bit uh, what you're going to notice is that here we have uh, these rooms so if I select this we have this marker uh, element and it's marking out this particular room and then as you can see that's connected to the room itself so if I scroll through this you can see we have all of that information so we can uh, visually kind of confirm on the plan okay we have covered this room and these rooms here however this whole segment this whole wing of the of the building hasn't been covered yet uh, we need to send somebody there uh, and so on so it gives you a really nice kind of top-down view even before you actually have a Revit file ready. Now, working with floor plans is really practical for architects and engineers that are comfortable working with this type of a top-down view. However, if you have somebody that isn't an architect and doesn't have a background in viewing tons of plans, well, we have a gallery view, which gives you a more elegant kind of view with images kind of at the front and all of the important information there. So we're looking at the same data. So the data we had in that list and the data we have in the uh, drawing set is the same data that we have here. We're just viewing it in another way. So here you can see we have the, the image on top. We can actually switch between different images and then we have all of the uh, most important data here. Now you can also customize this. So what they can do is they can go to edit visible fields. So for example, I can say, okay, floor condition is really important for this client. I'm just going to add that floor condition and then move it all the way to the top. So it's basically the, the first thing that shows here. So we have that floor condition and the client is going to be happy because, uh, well, you can see that first. Now you can also change the type of a view that you have. So if I just go here to view options and go to view settings, you can see here it's currently set to a gallery view. However, if I click on change view type, you can see we have a table, a gallery, a drawing, and then we also have a document view. Now a document view is really interesting. So let me actually exit out of here and discard the changes. So we have this custom report builder. This is your uh, document view. So let's say you're working with somebody that doesn't like computers and wants actual documents, or you just want to have this in a kind of more elegant document view. You can print it out. You can have it on the field, give it to a worker or whatever you want to do with a document. Well, uh, you can create a document view just like we have for the, the, the list view and the gallery view and the drawing set. The document view basically shows all of the same information information in a different format. So here we have the name and then we have all of the parameters or all of the fields that we've added. Here we have the, uh, the part of the plan where that's located at and here we have some field photos. Now, what's really great about this is like anything else in layer, this can be completely customized. So if I click on this little edit document icon here, you can see we have containers, we have fixed containers and so on. So you can use this to build out your document and then each 
document that you generate, so for each room in this case, for a room survey, you're going to have the same layout. So you don't have to bother with InDesign or any other software for kind of formatting things. You can just do everything here. And then, for example, if I find this floor condition, uh, let's say that for a floor condition, I want this to be a bit larger. So I can just come in here and then I can say, okay, so for this, let's make it an 11 size text. So it's going to look like that. I can even make it bold. So now, depending on the floor condition, the client can see that there. I can exit out of that. And of course, I can edit the entire layout or anything else. I can also change here. So I can change to a different room if I want. Uh, and then I can view that room. And when it comes to exporting, you can export uh, this PDF, you can export only this one, or you can export the entire survey. And of course, this isn't limited to a room survey, you can do this with a uh, room uh, with a data sheet or with furniture or whatever other data database that you have, you can do this for that. Now, What's really great about having all of your data linked up with the model data is that it can actually work the other way around. So for example, in this case, I have this specialty equipment and here, let's discard all of these changes that they've made to the document. So this is the specialty equipment that we have in this building. I can even add more if I want. And then for uh, each of these, uh, you can see we have just like everything else, we have all of the uh, all of the fields that we can add for this, this particular item. And then we also have the element spatial relationship here and then we can see where that is. And we can also view it here in the model. So as you can see, we have the model here, but also we can open up the model view, which is yet another uh, view type. And here you can see that in the model, it's going to basically make everything else uh, kind of transparent and bluish. And here we can see this is the special specialty equipment, these kitchenettes. So I can see where exactly they are in the model. Uh, and uh, it's a really useful way to quickly navigate and find those elements. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. Again, if you want to check out Layer, I'm going to be leaving a link down in the description of this video. So make sure to check it out. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. And also, I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.